Hello, everyone. Welcome to Arash's World. Today, we have a very special guest. Uh, we have Dr. Ludwig Janus with us. Um, how are you doing today? Yeah, very well. Some old, a little old, but good, in good condition. In good spirit. And that's that's, yeah. that's really yeah. important. Good spirit. Yeah. Now, how would you briefly describe yourself? And I always ask all my guests here, how, what would you say about yourself? And I'm very fascinated yeah. to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I, I am born... Uh, 39, 1939, and had a psychoanalytic education, but then other experiences in humanistic psychology, like regression therapy and psychodrama and others. And uh, then I got an int uh, discovered the extraordinary meaning of Otto Rang in his research of our prenatal experiences that for the normal doctor was um, amnesia, frühkindliche, early child amnesia. But it is not amnesia, it is a whole rich experience, but pre-verbal spared in our emotional and sensorical uh, um, uh, memory and uh, i there is a uh, the society for prenatal psychology and i got uh, became uh, president of the society and we have an active international exchanges ever about prenatal psychology that is wonderful and, and also I psychohistory also psychohistory but it's not important on the individual level but also on the collective level mm -hmm. it is fascinating and for me also how you introduce yourself with being born and i think that is that is very fascinating because our story begins with being born but it actually begins before being born and so the pregnancy itself is so important is so vital and uh, yeah. your book that you have, The Enduring Effects of Prenatal Experiences, Echoes from the Womb. Um, mm. I, I love the title and especially the second part, Echoes from the Womb, is very poetic. And I yeah. find it also interesting when I was uh, discovering Rank for myself, who, who I'm fascinated with, when he talks about the womb. And then that that's the, the, the trauma, the beginning of trauma for us and uh, how that experience is traumatic. And it's interesting with, I like workplace. So in, in English, we, the word womb um, also rhymes with tomb. So when we go into that, <laughs> that same place, the dark place, yeah. we come from a dark place and we go to a dark place and then we have a life yeah. all in between. So I would mm -hmm. be very fascinated to talk about pregnancy, the uh, importance of it, not just in terms of uh, the experience, biological processes, but also psychological processes, because it's so important to our lives as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, how is it that it it it's really like shaping us to hear the the connection with between uh, the prenatal experiences you mentioned, pre-verbal, which is something I'd really like to mm -hmm. look at, the experience of trauma, as well as perinatal. So, what the first year of life that is so crucial. What are some things that could happen? What are some things we should watch out for? And um, when things go wrong, what can we do about it? So there's a whole yes. lot of questions. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> also the interesting thing is that Rang discovered the importance of our birth experience mm -hmm. as a dramatic change of a one prenatal world, mother connected to an outer real world uh, that is a, this, a big event in our life. Which but we don't he, remember consciously, I think. That's yeah, we, it too. is a probable yeah. experience by yeah. all of us, yes. but not on the speech level, but on the experiential emotional level. And it is interesting. There was a two-year-long fight between Rank and Freud about uh, uh, the relevance of this experience. Mm -hmm. And Freud said, because he was a denying of the mother, importance of mother at that time, men were the <laughs> godlike beings on earth. 
and um, the focus on the mother, father mother wo woman does, yeah. are not exposed yeah. and he said a birth cannot be so important but is important and that was his discovery uh, the unripeness we are born too early he said our pregnancy is shortened we come to the world in an unripe condition and this discovery explains much. And this was proven on a biological level by a man, Adolf Portmann. He spoke of the a physiological prematurity. Mm -hmm. Either we come to the world, but we are not able to handle the world. Mm -hmm. The little elephant comes to the world, goes on his legs, yeah finds his mother, he has an orientation in space mm -hmm. and, and and can be an active part of the elephant's community. Mm -hmm. We are born helpless. We cannot uh, uh, move in anything. We can't and, feed ourselves. We, are, we, can't anything. we, yeah. are, we have to manage this outer world. And this is the special thing. We develop our autonomy but but we can say also our ego in the relation to the mother or father mm -hmm. on this unripe level mm -hmm. it's more dreamlike consciousness mm -hmm. a mother father are god goddess mm -hmm. not personal beings in the reality and when we go, uh, and this, all this is stored in the right brain hemisphere, no, on the preverbal level. And then the dominate, dominance part of the brain goes to the left. There's the speech center. And when, when you are two years, three years, we learn to speech and we speak over the things of, uh, of the child with three years. Not about my birth experience or so, but he, we have an imagination of this early experience, and these are the contents of his religion. As we have in Christianity the myth of the paradise, we come from another world, and there was a very uh, difficult thing, and the, we had fallen down on earth. Mm -hmm. That is an dreamlike imagination of the prenatal, perinatal, postnatal reality. We all have lived in another world together with a higher being. And now we can reflect this religious imagination as a real happening in our life. And it is interesting. Uh, these myths about paradise and sin and fall and so are accepted because all have the feeling there can be any truth in this. But it is not personal. It's not my personal pregnancy experience, per perinatal experience and early first year experience. And that is new prenatal research and Rang was the first to discover this is to, to, uh, to get access to the pre-verbal experience stored in my emotions, imaginings and feelings, sensations and so on. And uh, it, it reminds me also of Gnosticism, the idea of Sophia, the mother, and then how that's the mother of God. And uh, that's one, what some people say. So that kind of connection, and I love the, the connection again with paradise and the womb, because you are yeah. in the safety and comfort. It is you're floating, you're being fed, you're warm. And then suddenly you're going through this, this, this tunnel and you see light, but then the world outside is cold and you're separated from the one that was nurturing you. And so yeah. that kind of longing and that kind of connection is 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 so important because you don't know what's going on as a baby. And so mm. again, as you say, our speech starts at two. Our brain does not remember anything before age of two in terms of like concrete images, yeah. I think, uh, at least unconsciously it's there with us. 
but how to deal with that, that kind of uh, trauma that we experience and we all experience as human beings. And human beings are, are strange in the sense that we take such a long time to, to develop in, in the pregnancy and trying to become independent as compared to, 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 uh, to other animals. So I find that fascinating too. But I also find it interesting in the correlation between anxiety and uh, the birth because when we're anxious, we go in a fetal position. It's like uh, kind of going back to that moment or we're out of breath because we did yeah. not have breaths when we came to the mm -hmm. world. And the first cry is like uh, so important too, of like announcing your mm -hmm. existence, uh, your uh, mm -hmm. coming into the world with a, a shout, a mm -hmm. cry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is interesting. First, Freud said there is this unconscious experience of the little child it, in us are the experience emotions of the child and then the next step was alfred adler who said behind the oedipus complex is the minority complex mm. and the minority complex has is a consequence of bad conditions of my mother mm. he said it in very clear words uh, uh, a poor workers, uh, woman at the age in a factory uh, in 1900 uh, uh, and so on was depressed, was socially marginalized, mm -hmm. and had was in a situation of minority, <laughs> and uh, this was transmitted to the child, uh, and um, also. The time before birth is not always heaven, but sometimes birth. And if the mother is in bad condition, you have this minority complex. And um, Freud was a very expected child. His golden Siggy, mm -hmm. the dream of mother, a Jewish mother is um, uh, has it worth because he has born a son mm -hmm. and therefore the hopes of the uh, love of uh, was to the golden city <laughs> golden ziggy and uh, Adler was coming from poor people he knew the misery of normal life and you, he knew the misery of the woman and he knew the misery of the children at that time mm -hmm. And it's it's all fascinating with Adler though, because that's that drive as like when you are in that minority and you feel like you have to you work harder in in in, yeah. in many ways and you try to prove yourself. So in a way you can also see it in a, in in a positive way as as a drive where you say I have to prove myself and you work hard. But yeah. uh, absolutely, there's that lingering feeling that you might never feel enough and you might never yeah. be like part of it and be fully accepted. And it is very strange uh, that Adler was uh, marginalized uh, yeah. in the in the history of psychotherapy, and uh, he had this drive to power. That if you have the drive to power, to be not in such a bad situation that you have been before birth or after birth. And this deep anxiety and misery feeling mm -hmm. of bad conditions of mother, pregnancy, and birth, uh, you you want never to experience again. And therefore, you make big. Mm -hmm. And the others shall be mm -hmm. the... Uh, the uh, the the poor uh, poor uh, poor man and that is uh, that is a re uh, important um uh, a big importance in russia we have a very toxified society violence in the history stalinistic czaristic regimes murderous regimes and uh, misery from in the history and therefore they are they have and uh, uh, Putin his background is very cruel um, uh, in the war condition of the mother of the his parents and therefore he has deep anxieties, paranoid anxieties to be killed 
and therefore he kills the uh, he has the idea the crazy idea that the Ukrainians have the plan to genocide the Russians that is very fantastic and therefore he makes this war it's a self hate him him in himself and all these things were strange for the golden ziggy <laughs> he wanted <laughs> he wanted to to speak with einstein and roman romo on with the with the heads of the society but yeah. not with this uh, anxious and uh, poor people yeah and and i love it how harang talks about that too of like seeing the other as as a threat but when you when you kill the other you get a sense of immortality because you think like my people yeah. and that kind of division too it's like these are the russian people these are the ukrainians these are and so it, when yeah. you look at at that difference when we see polarized societies everywhere around the world and that's because you want your tribe to survive and you by killing the other you think that you beat uh, uh, you became yeah. immor immortal and you beat them and that's yeah. you can't beat death because that's the reality that that we will all experience and i i love how um uh, rank looks at that the fear of death but also the fear of life itself that we are afraid of yeah. fully living of experiencing things and that's why we're often in a comfort zone and we don't move along and a lot of it can be traced back perhaps to our childhood and even earlier to our prenatal experiences mm. as well and uh, to understand these connections uh, is so important because by better the situation of mothers in their relation and parents in their relation to their children, better the world. Mm -hmm. Happy children don't make worse wars mm -hmm. exactly. and no, yeah. no happy children wants to kill anyone. All the murderers, there are interviews with mothers of murderers, all the, they say they had catastrophic mm -hmm. uh, pregnancies. Yeah. Although for these murderers, her primal experience was hell. And in their lives, they create hell for others and themselves. And it is a simple connection. And therefore, we have the big tool to change the world. Mm -hmm. The first thing, or the, uh, we are in this change because we have the emancipation of women, mm -hmm. the, the well, uh, balance, equality in men-woman uh, relationships. And this is the big uh, um, advance that uh, that we have and therefore uh, there is an empathy <laughs> in the between mother and child yeah. it is crazy to realize that the children of my generation to a great part were beaten as children mm -hmm. if you if you uh, it is and now nobody beats his child in earlier times, it was self-understanding. You, if the uh, child does not follow, you beat the child, mm -hmm. and this destroys his uh, soul, the soul. And in Russia, there is in the families there is a big uh, violence, and all these very big leaders, Stalin and Hitler, were beaten children, beaten child. child. And therefore, all this is very, uh, 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 we have the knowledge to better the world. That is yeah. wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> the, what helps us too is uh, with evolution, we have a very positive feeling towards uh, gender, towards uh, pregnant uh, pregnancies and pregnant women. And so it's yeah. kind of the sense of protection we have unconsciously, I would say even. And that's like programmed in us evolutionary. So that's a benefit that we should really take advantage of and always like 
try to help and support and uh, as well the, the relationship between the mother and the, the the baby inside it should be again one of love one of experiencing um, um, <clears throat> less stress if possible and I'm thinking of all the pregnant women right now who are going through wars that are happening in the world and I'm thinking of those unborn children I mean this is traumatic. And so we are, as you're saying, the, the answer is there, but we are also propagating a lot of misery in the world by doing these, uh, these wars, this violence and so on, which is, uh, again, having all these effects on people who are not even born yet. And the important um, <clears throat> noun for this in German is Verantwortung. What's mm -hmm. in English Verantwortung? Accountability. Responsiveness. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. And the main thing, or the, our main task, to be responsible for our actions, yes. for our relations, mm -hmm. and uh, for uh, to to be resp in, in respect of the consequences what we do. And now we, uh, we start to realize that responsibility is the main thing. Yes, yes. And uh, Putin has no idea of responsibility. Yeah. He is acting out his misery yeah. and, and others. But Biden has this. I found it interesting that uh, Biden says Putin has no soul. He felt that this man was a hidden criminal. He felt it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, but he takes no responsibility what he is doing. But yeah. it's our task to do it in the small side of our, yeah. Therefore, we have this democracy mm -hmm. that enables us to be responsible. And I want to look at therapy, too, of how can we go through that? So somebody like uh, Putin, as you mentioning, how can they uh, they they heal from it or get better? Uh, what are different? <clears throat> you use art therapy. Uh, there's also the uh, catharsis regression therapy, which I find quite, quite interesting. Can we talk a little bit about that, what they are? And then what are some of the, the benefits of that, too, of how to 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 use mm -hmm. that to heal from these wounds that we have or the trauma? Uh, the one uh, psychoanalysis had the so-called uh, analyse, what, what it, uh, what, a teaching analysis or so, mm -hmm. self-experience. To understand the patient, you have to make self to under have to understand ourselves, yourself. Yes. But if you don't, on the Freudian level, you have an understanding for the little three-year-old boy or the girl. But on the Rangian level, you need an understanding of the baby you have been, or the uh, prenatal child, or the birth experience. And this, you can get this by regression therapy, primal therapy, uh, growth therapy, and other therapies. Uh, but um, by these therapies, and also by reading Rang, you yeah. have begin. You get a broader understanding, and and if the, this is the main thing, if you make um, uh, primal therapy without understanding <laughs> these connections, it is uh, nonsense. You need this broader understanding, and if you have made this um, regression therapy, or you have this broader understanding that your birth experience or a prenatal is real experience living in you, you can get in connection with this, and um, then it is not necessary to take LSD, as Groff said, yeah. or to uh, to make this um, primal therapy sessions. It is uh, you can understand if a patient is uh, touching his head and has suffo suffocated. Mm -hmm. You can see experience empathy you have empathy that is reliving certain aspects of his birth mm -hmm. or other things maybe a navel cord uh, uh, on the neck mm -hmm. um, and other things if you uh, if a, a baby is always touching the, ha the hand you understand the baby wants to show the misery of coming about the synthesis 
uh, had br brain uh, uh, pain, mm -hmm. uh, scalp brain, um, uh, brain on the head, uh, pain on the head mm -hmm. by coming through the birth ch channel and so on. And then you can encompass by by empathy bro with broadened consciousness and self awareness. You can accompany a patient yes. through this. You, this it's your go in these feelings, feel this um, anxiety relates it to the first to the old situation and not to the actual situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, there are patients or persons who have anxious in, in tunnels, mm -hmm. and the, uh, they they make a shortcut with the tunnel, rear tunnel, the birth channel, mm -hmm. and uh, all, all only this clearing of this yes. uh, mismatching mm -hmm. of tunnel and channel, birth channel can make a change in the in the inner condition and, and can help in to come out yeah also there is a problem uh, if you have only difficult birth situation mm -hmm. and you have a tunnel anxiety or something like uh, talking uh, 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 brief uh, problems mm -hmm. then only this explanation and uh, accompanying in the feeling mm -hmm. can help and solve the problem. Mm -hmm. But many people have several traumas. Yes. They were unwanted. That is a, the most big problem mm -hmm. because the first word is the mother. If you are unwanted, you have you, you have no right to exist. But you you need the right to exist yes. in the whole life. Yes. Yes. But if the right to exist is denied, you as this minority complex, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to leave. The, it's better I'm not there. Mm -hmm. And this is a burden on the shadow yes. on your life. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we have the, a big problem of the um, uh, one side medical orientation of the obstetrical, obstetrical uh, uh, clinics. Mm -hmm. They say um, pregnancy and birth are natural events. And the, the mother and the child have to, the power to, life power to realize this. And it is a man-dominated situation. If you have, you are pregnant. We have the, we have a prob You have a problem, and you can. There can this disaster, that disaster, and I only the big doctor. Uh, you have to lie on the big doctor, and the uh, the the mother is breaking down, <laughs> and then uh, uh, she is anxious. And goes in the clinic, uh, birth clinic, uh, with anxiety. And then comes the next doctor and says, "No problem. We take over. We make the birth. We have uh, Zange. <laughs> we have many interventions and uh, make a narcosis. And <laughs> uh, and this is a big trauma for mother and child. Yes. And William Emerson has written a book on this birth trauma." In Deutsch, Geburtstrauma, the consequences of these medical interventions. This is a big burden in our society because if you have these interventions, you are intervention means help as a normal birth, vaginal birth. You are the hero's quest, you are the hero who he creates the, the transition to the world. You like a god, like godlike being, a hero. But if you have this intervention, you feel helpless. You are nothing. Uh, I need help. Help of the doctor. Help of uh, the authority. Help and so, and with my on my and I have this minority <laughs> complex and so, and therefore I am uh, I became uh, neurotic, helplessness, anxious, and and so on. What about premature? And therefore, the, we we have to change this um, uh, obstetrician 
uh, clinic. Mm -hmm. What about premature babies, though? Because they are, they are again before time, and they're taken out. They're not. It's not the natural path, like cesarean sec, C-section usually. So is that uh, that must affect them too when they're premature, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, they're pre it is. You have always to see both sides. In earlier times, many mothers and children died. <laughs> like uh, it was yeah. normal uh, uh, birth and pregnancy were life dangerous for the woman. Mm -hmm. Also half in, in Bavaria, southern Germany, half of the babies died in the first year of life. life. Yeah. Yeah. Like that this was a misery in the families. Modern knowledge of uh, anatomy and birth process and the medical knowledge mm -hmm. helped you can now survive. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is important to have the psychological aspects of the dangerous surviving or the dangerous impacts of this medical surviving. Mm -hmm. And prematurity is uh, the same. Early birth, as well, early birth, uh, short pregnancy means in earlier times death for the child. Mm -hmm. Now you can in the birth incubator and so on survive. Mm -hmm but have uh, deep, painful memories on this. But nowadays, we have, mm -hmm. yeah, we have baby therapy, and so we have knowledge to help uh, chill babies, your little children, mm -hmm. to, um, uh, in Deutsch, verstoffwechseln, to handle these painful feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they, they usually make up, though, even though they start off like uh, behind, they usually make up for it in terms of growth and development, the premature babies. Is that correct? So the, the brain develops like at a, at a faster rate than to, to catch up. And so in yeah. many ways, they are probably able to uh, recreate and uh, just get rid of the deficit that they, they have because of, again, coming yeah. early. And we, we in Heidelberg, I'm pride on the one thing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, in earlier times, when this uh, intensive medicine that was in, discovered for the adults, you can take over by the doctor basic functions of breathing mm -hmm. by artificial breathing and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, adapted to the uh, um, handling of premature children. They mm -hmm. cannot breathe mm -hmm. and you can... Uh, artificial mm -hmm. breathing, mm -hmm. but um, uh, uh, this uh, separation of mothers is a basic fault, and uh, we because the the uh, the, the child uh, it is essential to be to able to breathe, but to uh, oxygen, mm -hmm. but it's to have contact. You only without contact, you would have no feeling. You have uh, feel alien in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, there was this um, um, bringing the child to the body of the mother or on the father. Mm -hmm. Does is um, do you know the name for this? Um, um, also, uh, the, the the little child did not come in the incubator but on the body of the mother or the child. And this was partly also invented, uh, introduced in the handling of pre your baby in, in Germany, in Heidelberg, together wow. with a man, Otmin Linderkamp. Mm -hmm. And he had a connection to prenatal psychology and my conferences and uh, realized this um, uh, bring early contact situation, mm -hmm. right? and then the people, many of the babies can breathe by themselves if mm -hmm. they are in contact. Yeah. They need not the breathing machine. Yeah? I, I find that fascinating. I want to go back to what you're saying also about earlier through like fears and anxiety. And so when we use, I used self analysis. So I looked at various things in my life, and just things became clearer. Like when you make the unconscious conscious. You find out what's driving you. What? Why is it I'm scared of this? What's causing my anxiety and fear? And I was able to deal with a lot of them. And I used to suffer from sleep apnea, which uh, now has gone away. 
now that I've dealt with my anxieties and fears and so on. And so mm -hmm. that connection too with the, the, the mind and the body. And one of the issues I have with Freud when he talks about um, insight and epiphany, which I, I think is very important once you have that, but what's the next step? Because it just seems to be cognitive as like, oh, I know what's wrong with the world. I know what's wrong with this. I read rank and I understand it. But then to apply it to the body as well, that kind of combination of both. And once you do that, you I find I had catharsis. Once I discharge all these like emotions that I have, these fears, I realize them. I become freer and I become happier and I become healthier as well in many ways uh, with my body too. <clears throat> yeah. And that's fascinating. Yeah, we yeah. we we have to integrate all these yes. levels, and we have to re, uh, respect. Uh, Freud was born in a in German Kaiserreich, oh, yeah. Kaiser with the uh, emperor's time of the emperor. emperor. Only the men and the authority, the male authority, mm. was important. Yeah. and he had not the, that relation is important. That was invented by Rank. The relation, and also the, with mother and child, and mother and baby, and the prenatal relation, and um, uh, we we have uh, as this re really a, a, a progress mm -hmm. in our understanding ourselves and what is important in life, mm -hmm. and we if we are in relation, we are <laughs> uh, we have an autonomy. Mm -hmm. If you are dependent to an, an authority, you uh, there is no autonomy. You have to follow your master. Mm -hmm. And in earlier times, you had to follow God to follow the, follow the bishop. <laughs> but today, we have to take responsibility for ourselves. And it is possible. It is possible. We no. can use the knowledge. Uh, or not only for uh, in in earlier times it was you had uh, get if you were ill you get access to to psychotherapy, mm -hmm. but it is important to access to self understanding for everybody. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have today this coaching. Yeah. But I think in our uh, we in our school should be one third learning to live. Learning about relation, learning about conflicts, learning about father, 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 motherhood, fatherhood, and so on. One third. I learned only Latin, mathematics, running, <laughs> sport. <laughs> it's it's not sufficient to live. No, it's not. Sufficient. It's not sufficient. I had it during my life to learn. Oh. <laughs> Oh, there's important relations, important love is important, mm -hmm, <laughs> so, mm -hmm, yeah. conflicts and, and resolution is important, responsibility is important. Yeah, yeah I, I, yeah. I grew up in Germany, so it was discipline, and they taught me good discipline. But what about the rest? What about all the other things in life? You know, discipline is important, but there's so much more to life than that. And yeah, yeah. I, and, I think uh, what I liked in nowadays is the respect for children. So that's that's kind of growing uh, nowadays where um, um, yeah. it's we're accepting them a bit more. We are uh, to trying to understand the worldview. And for my son, I always taught him. It's like, I'm not the, the father telling you what to do. I explained things, yeah. the reason with you, which backfires because now he, he has these counter arguments that are very good. It's like, dad, but this and this. And it's like, you're right, you know, and accepting mm. that, that we are not gods or authorities or emperors yeah. as parents and yeah, yeah. vulnerable to that that is going in the right direction in many ways so we're not disciplining in the bad sense disciplining and punishing our kids but working with them dealing with them talking to them that's really important and if there's peace in the family there's peace in the society yeah. and the a special thing is i want to mention is the uh, förderung förderung der the uh, support the mothers in their relation to the child before birth. It's called um, um, bonding analysis. Oh. There's also in uh, in APA, in the American Society for Prenatal Psychology, there are courses about bonding analysis. Um, the name it was it's supporting the prenatal relation of mother and child 
And we have a big book, um, Handbook of Prenatal and Perinatal Psychology. And in this book, there are articles about prenatal bonding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, also in the uh, Journal of the American Society for Prenatal Psychology, APA, uh, there is an article in the last year about prenatal bonding and how helpful it is. If there is a connection to the child and connections, empathy, Einfühlung between mother and child before birth, the child has a feeling of existence, yes. a, a basic autonomy. I am in a cosmos, but it is wonderful <laughs> to yes. be in a cosmos. Yes. And I am accepted. Yes. Wonderful. Then I can accept my life, myself, and you and the experience of birth then is a big adventure mm -hmm. because you have this self-confidence yeah. the basic uh, self-esteem and yet you can go and you can go to the birth process without losing yourself mm -hmm. that yeah. is interesting that is a quote from rank uh, being or uh, being born without losing yourself, we have to beware our basic safe esteem uh, through the transition to the outer world, mm -hmm. and then we can have the feeling of being welcome, yeah. and we can uh, start our life. And right? once we do, and that, we need. We have... Yeah. Yeah. And we need parents to uh, that accompany us. Either you were accepted as a baby and a three year old uh, uh, girl or a child. And so we need uh, to accompany uh, the accompany of the parents up to adulthood. Yes. Uh, that is the, the challenge of parenthood. Yes. That is, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> so it's a big so... challenge. It's a big challenge to be father or mother. It's an yeah? existential challenge, too. Yeah. Existential. And the bonding, the right? bonding is, starts off, it's so important, but then we can uh, we connect with others. We connect with uh, our fellow beings. We connect with yeah. our earth. And if you think of the earth and the cosmos as like the, the, the womb, the cosmos, the universe is the womb, and we're safe in it, we're warm in it. If we perceive yeah. the world like that, the sense of calm and tranquility will come and we will be happier and we will cause less violence in the world and uh, less yeah. division and more more unity. It's such a pleasure talking to you, Dr. Ludwig, uh, Ludwig Janus. Um, you are a psychoanalyst, um, uh, psychotherapist, uh, author. Uh, your book is, again, The Enduring Effects of Prenatal Experiences, Echoes from the Womb. Uh, the book you mentioned you're an editor of, uh, it's called A Handbook of Prenatal and Perinatal Psychology, Integrating Research and Practice. And um, uh, the book that you also, uh, we talked about a bit too, is Otto Rank's The Trauma of Birth, which I like to call the birth of trauma, right? So kind of switching it around, but uh, <laughs> it's it's the same thing. So uh, also a, a very influential book that was published 100 years ago. So uh, fascinating stuff, excellent books. Thank you so much for this fascinating discussion, uh, Dr. Yanis. It's such a pleasure talking yeah. to you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you.